bakers and welcome to The Revolution, a bakery equipment and supplies company that's here to help you succeed. But today we're going to do that by talking about containers. Not these things. But these things. Whether you're a large bakery developing a new product or a brand new startup just stepping out trying to make their products from their own kitchen a little bit more commercial you're going to have to make many, many decisions along the way that will make your products as delicious as possible, as profitable as possible, and as easy to produce as possible. And one of the first decisions you're going to need to make is what type of container you're going to make your product in. Whether it's a pie, a tar, or a quiche, you'll have to decide which container best suits your product and your process, and of course, your pocket. Firstly, we're going to talk about the most traditional form of container for producing pies, and that is the rigid tin. Within this, I'm going to include hoops as well. We're going to look at the, uh, the benefits of using tins, and also a few things that you might need to consider before committing to them. First of all, the tin. Tins have been manufactured for many, many years and are readily available in a variety of sizes and shapes. Uh, the con their ability to conduct heat directly into your product means that you will get the best bake in a tin. Therefore, if your product is your absolute key priority, making the best product you possibly can, you want to work in a tin if possible. The other benefits to tins is that they, on average, a properly cured tin will last for anywhere up to 10 years and as such makes them very cost effective over the long term. Uh, they're in good supply, so you're never going to really be running short. Um, some people over the years have favoured hoops. I'd say generally speaking, the reason people favour hoops is due to the dimensions available that aren't available in a tin. And uh, secondly, having no bottom means that the base of your product is in direct contact with the baking sheet, which of course is going to give us uh, less chance of underbaked pastry on the bottom. And of course, it's also going to make life easier when it comes to removing the product. In honesty, a well cured tin, once upended, should release a pie anyway. Things to consider, um, the initial outlay will obviously be more expensive um, and the big one that normally puts people off will be that you cannot freeze your product in a tin. So if anywhere along your process you're going to need to freeze your product in its original container, it cannot be a tin. When we do freeze products in the tins, uh, the salt in the pastry deteriorates the tin and when the pie is baked and comes out, you'll find black marks down the side, um, which is effectively the, the tin uh, material that has corroded onto the pie. And I'll guarantee that every single one of us at some point has eaten a pie from a bakery that has been freezing in tins because they were none the wiser and they've had those black marks on the side. Um, so that seems to be the key one, if you're going to need to freeze your product. If you can bake your product, take it out of the tin and then freeze it, then it becomes a possibility. But of course, this can deteriorate the product and make it a bit more inferior once it's baked again. You'll need to run some tests to ensure that you can give um, good details on reheating instructions uh, to ensure that you know, there's enough heat and enough time given to that product to give that pastry and bring that pastry back to life. I will say hoops are a bit less easy to get hold of. Um, and they're also, if you believe at some stage that you're gonna need to build up from hoops onto a, a press of some sort, um, which I'm sure we'll look at in later videos, Hoops can make that more difficult and more costly, so be aware of that. The next containers that uh, were invented, if you like, were, were foil and disposable containers. 
Within this bracket, I'm going to include paper, board, uh, and any other type of container that is uh, single use. So the benefits of these things across the board is initial outlay is very, very uh, low. Of course, they're cheap, again, readily available in a variety of sizes and shapes. We've got a tart or quiche style uh, foil here and the standard five inch meat and potato style. Um, so foils, obviously we can freeze our products within the foils without any risk uh, of, of detriment or detriment to the product. The majority of disposable containers are recyclable as well, so that's a bonus. And one of the key reasons and factors that these were as successful as they have been over recent decades is because they can help reduce breakages. Because if you're going to consider how you're going to transport or distribute your goods, if they're going to, if you're not selling straight out of a shop or straight onto a plate, then and it's going to need to be trucked or transported in some way across the country, you're going to experience breakages. By holding the paste and the product together, uh, it's going to decrease the likelihood of any damages. So certainly products such as egg custards, jam tarts, for those that are familiar, using very short, sweet pastries. These tins are now more, more or less obsolete simply because people were pressing to foils as it reduced the amount of breakages. If the consumer and the end consumer um, damages it when removing it from the foil, it's not an issue, but if it arrives to the retail establishment broken or damaged, it's gonna cost you. So if uh, that's something you'll need to consider as well. One thing you'll have to consider with disposable containers is that you will get an inferior bake. It can be combated to a degree by ensuring the oven is preheated and possibly increasing the temperature for the first few minutes of baking. Then reducing the heat for the remainder of the bake. This gives the pastry a chance to crisp up nice and early. Giving your product the best chance. But without doing this, often the product will sweat and cause underbaked pastry to be on the bottom of your product. Finally, I want to talk about these. This is a composite material. Um, as far as I know, there is only one manufacturer of these and it's probably patented. Uh, it's known as Exoglass and it's developed over in France. It is kind of taking the, um, certainly the tart side of things by storm. They are bakeable, they are freezable. They do not need to be cured or greased in the majority of cases, and they don't distort or deform in any way. They are absolutely fantastic. Uh, the, the only drawback with these is simply that they were developed in France. So a lot of the sizes and dimensions will loan themselves well to tarts and quiches, but on the pie front, it's, it's gonna be lesser so. I do think there's a 100 or 120 mil diameter uh, with tapered sides and about 30 mil deep, possibly as good as you're gonna get for a pie. And outside of that, it's gonna be something like this, which I think would make a beautiful pie, but it, it is in fact uh, originally designed as a ramekin container. So whilst these seem to tick all the boxes um, with long-term cost effectiveness, because of course disposable containers over time, it's a continued cost due to their consumable nature. With the exoglass and the tins, long-term, it's gonna actually keep costs down. We're talking about very thin, very sweet paste. Um, it needs to be absolutely crisp. So conduction of heat is not an issue in these containers because it's exceptional as well. Well, I hope that was of some use to you. And I'm curious to know which container you'll be going for and why. Uh, so feel free to, to get in touch with us through the comments or via our website. Um, in the meantime, we will be looking to go out more information. If you have a question feel free to put it down below or send us a quick email and I will answer it as quickly and as efficiently as we can. 
In the meantime, thank you for being a part of the revolution. We'll see you next time.